हेलो देर टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड द डेरिवेशन ऑफ टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट सो द फॉर्मूला ऑफ टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट इज इक्वल टू टू यू साइन थीटा डिवाइडेड बाय जी सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वील अंडरस्टैंड वट दिस फॉर्मूला स्टैंड फॉर इन दिस फॉर्मूला टी इज बेसिकली टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट टाइम ऑफ फ्लाइट यू इज द इनिशियल वेलोसिटी इनिशियल वेलोसिटी जी is the acceleration due to gravity and theta is the angle that you makes with horizontal so give you a context let's say i have a ball at the origin so if i give this ball an initial velocity of u in such a way that this makes an angle theta with the base so the ball will undergo a parabolic motion something like this the path of the ball will be a parabolic and this is what is called a projectile motion so first of all we'll understand how this formula comes into picture why this time of flight is directly proportional to u the sin theta and inversely proportional to the acceleration due to gravity where does this two come from in this formula so all these things we would be discussing in this video so first of all let's analyze the motion of this ball so the ball is moving like this right as the time passes the ball will keep on moving in this way let's say this is x axis and this is y axis now this ball is undergoing a motion in two dimension now it's a little difficult to understand a motion in two dimension so that's why we can split it into two one dimensional motions how let's say suppose you are only able to see the motion of this ball along x axis so can i say along x axis the ball is only going in a forward direction in a horizontal direction something like this so forget about the motion of the ball in y axis for a movement so along the x axis the ball is only going in a one dimensional motion towards it, the x axis something like this now let's apply the same logic along the y axis so let's say if you can only observe the motion of this ball along y axis so you will see that the ball first goes up till a certain point and then takes a u turn and comes back something like this this is how the motion of the ball is so i can divide this two dimensional motion into two motions one along x axis along x axis so along x axis the motion of this ball is simply like a straight line motion then along a y axis along y axis where the ball is going somewhat like it goes till some initial point uh, till some final point and then comes back to the initial point something like this that's how the motion of the ball is along y axis now let's understand a bit about this x axis motion and about this y axis motion a little into detail first of all let's understand the forces that are involved in the x axis and on the y axis so along x axis there is no force acting on this particle why i am saying no forces because i might have thrown it with some initial velocity but once the particle is in air there is ideally no force that is being acted upon it in the horizontal direction so in the horizontal direction the particle keeps on moving with the same speed so we can say there is no force acting on the particle along the x axis now along the y axis there is a force of gravity now because of this force there's an acceleration that acts on this particle that would be equal to negative g the reason i am saying negative g is because the force of gravity will always act in the downward direction <coughs> so let's say i stick to the normal sign convention that this negative y axis is taken as negative positive y axis is taken as positive so the force of gravity is always pulling this ball down so the acceleration due to this force will always be negative g now since along x axis there is no force so i can say that acceleration along x axis will always be zero now that we have understood that the motion of this ball along x axis has zero acceleration and the motion of this ball along y axis has negative g acceleration now let's come back to our initial thing that is we were supposed to find the time of flight now in order to find the time of flight i can choose any of this thing i can either choose the motion of this ball along x axis 
or I can choose the motion of this ball along y axis. The reason I am saying that I can choose any of this is because imagine that you are somewhat here, right? You are somewhat here. Now, let's say you are only able to see the motion of this ball along x axis, right? Now, so after what time the ball will reach here? Let's say it would be two hours. I'm just making this up. Let's say after two hours, the ball reaches here. Then in the vertical direction, after ball goes from this position, comes back to this position. So what should be the time at that point? Shouldn't it again be two hours? So when I'm interested to find the time of flight, that is how much time does this ball take from its initial point to the final point? So the time of flight would be same either if you take x axis or you take it y axis. Now, if I try to find the time of flight using x axis, there's a little problem with that. The reason is because along x axis, I know that the speed of the particle is constant. Let's say that is ux. So that would be constant throughout the motion, right? Now I know the formula speed is equal to distance by time. But sadly, I do not know the distance that this particle travels in the x axis. So I would not be able to find the time of flight using the motion along x axis. Now I'm left to find the time of flight using the motion along y axis. Let's try to understand how we would be able to do that. Now the motion of this ball along y axis is very interesting. How? Because let's say the ball initially is here, right? So after some time, the ball is going upwards reaching a maximum height and then coming down. Now the ball is basically doing two motions, one going upward and one coming downward. How about I split the motion into two parts? Right now, let's say only I'm interested to find the time that this ball take to reach the uppermost height. Let's find the time for that. So the formula that we can use is V equals to U plus A T. Now the reason I'm splitting this into two motion is because at this particular point, I have an added information that the velocity of this ball would be zero. So I can say at the topmost point, V is zero, the initial velocity with which the body was thrown now along the Y axis. So this U is this velocity. So along the Y axis, this, I can say that this is U cos theta and this along the Y axis, I can say it would be U sine theta, right? This velocity can be written as U sine theta. So I can say that the initial velocity in the Y axis is U sine theta. Along the Y axis, I also know acceleration is negative G. So using this formula, I can say that zero is equal to U sine theta minus GT. That tells me that T is equal to U sine theta divided by G. So if you closely see, we are very much near to the initial equation that we were supposed to find. That is time of flight is equal to u 2u sin theta by g. The only problem with this formula is there is not an element of 2 in this. So was our initial formula incorrect or this is the correct formula? Let's find out. So the thing is time that we have found out as of now is the time that this ball takes from going from this position, position number one to position number two. But is it the total flight? No, right? It is half of the flight. So I can say that the body will take T time to go from this position, one position to two position. And the body will again take T time to come from two position to the first position. So the total time of flight, total time of flight would be equal to that capital T is equal to two times of T in that we just have to multiply this with 2. So it becomes 2u sine theta divided by g. This is the formula that we were supposed to derive. That time of flight is equal to 2u sine theta divided by g. And this is the derivation for time of flight. I hope the derivation is clear to you. Yes, you might be a little confused that sir, why did we just multiply this with 2? We can say that the time that this ball takes to reach the topmost height is also equal to the time that it takes to reach to the bottom ones again. So in a way, we can say that the motion under gravity is a symmetric motion. And with this, we are done with the derivation of time of flight for a ball in ground to ground projectile. I hope the video is clear to you. If there's any doubts, you can comment and see you in the next video. Till then, bye bye.